Hey guys, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to the wetlands, Florida. Today we're building a habitat for one of my favorite animals in the world, the short clawed otter. I absolutely love these guys and I cannot wait to get this built. This is the first habitat that you're going to come to in this zoo. Uh, but the second episode of this series, if you missed the first one, it is the huge capybara walkthrough that you can see just behind where we're building here. This building is going to be much more architectural than the capybara habitat. It's going to be all soaring white concrete and loads and loads of glass viewing windows for the guests. We're going to have underwater viewing, a shelter for them and everything that we need for the little otters to be as happy as possible. The Asian short clawed otter is the smallest of the otter species and probably my favourite as well. They have them in London Zoo and I've been going to see them since I was very little indeed. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're just impossibly cute, very active, very noisy and great to watch. So I cannot wait to get them into this habitat. And the habitat itself is actually gonna be um, influenced by the habitat at London Zoo. It's not gonna look anything like it at all, but in terms of the layout and the way that some of it works, it's gonna be quite similar to that. It's split into uh, land area and then an underwater viewing area with a slight depression in the ground for the guests in front of the underwater viewing so that you can get better views of them. Um, but it's all sort of joined together into one hole and then there's going to be a, a shelter at the back for them. And what I'm doing here is just laying out the basic sort of shape of the habitat. The big arch in the middle is just there to get the, the sort of scale and the curves that I want. That's not actually going to be in the final build. We're just sort of laying out the outside, making sure the size is correct and everything else. I want this to be a really, really attractive habitat because this is going to be sort of the centerpiece of the zoo. I always like to have um, a sort of a centerpiece habitat, which is the first thing that you get to. And I always like that to have water in it because it's interesting and it looks nice, uh, especially against the white concrete, you can get a really good look. So um, the first habitat in Tecton Zoo is Penguin Palace for the King Penguins. The first habitat in Pomoja Wildlife Park was the Penguin Lagoon for the African Penguins. And now we're gonna have the Otter Pool. So the path from the entrance will lead straight here. The guests will be able to see it through the entrance. And then when they get here, once they've once they've finished looking at the otters, they will then have a, a path going to the left and the right, and they can choose where they go next in the zoo. Off to the left will take them up to the Capybara walkthrough. On the, to the right will take them uh, to another habitat uh, that we'll be getting to in a future episode. Uh, and it will just make sure that not everyone is walking the same direction around the zoo and causing congestion. So just putting the barriers in, I'm using all glass at the moment. The ones that you see at the back will be turned into null barriers eventually. And I'm putting in an internal set of glass barriers here to create the water pool. And then I'm gonna build the terrain up and get rid of most of the glass. And the few bits that remain will be covered up with rocks so it looks natural. Uh, you won't be able to see any barriers at all where the glass is, apart of course from the long sheet of glass across the front of it for the guests to see into. And then the rest of it is going to be um, the land for the otters. And we will delete sections of this wall at the front to provide the viewing windows for the guests so they can see the otters pretty much all the way across the front of the habitat on land on the left, underwater in the middle, and then on land again on the right. If you didn't catch episode one, just to uh, catch you up on the concept for this zoo, this is set in the Everglades in Florida to conserve a much larger part of the Everglades. That's the, uh, that's the concept here. And this zoo will have every single one of the new wetlands animal pack animals in it, along with some of the other animals that would be appropriate for this kind of environment. Episodes are normally on Saturday on this channel, um, but uh, I've been working like crazy to get these two out uh, today. Episode three will be out this Saturday, where we're gonna take a look at the entrance and surrounding area uh, that I've not really shown yet. It's already built. And then we will get on to a, another habitat for one of the new animals. So make sure you subscribe down below if you want to see that or check out my other zoo, Tecton Zoo, which is the main zoo on this channel. But anyway, let's get back to this build. So I've finished off the walls at the front and now we're gonna tidy up this pool area, make the glass as low as we can possibly get it and then start covering up with rocks. So we get a sort of natural looking pool here. 
Obviously it wouldn't actually be a natural pool, it'd be man-made, but like any zoo you're going to want to try and make it look uh, as natural as possible and make it fit into the habitat so that the, uh, the otters look like they have a nice natural environment to live in. So I'm using loads of different types of rocks, concentrating on the mossy rocks underwater and then the uh, not mossy rocks above the waterline so it looks, um, looks more natural. I'm going to use some decals and things like that as well to put in uh, a water line and some moss and things like that to meld the, the land and the water together and just as many rocks as I can throw at it to make it look less regular. Um, I tend to use the natural rocks rather than the uh, faux rocks for builds like this. I don't really like the way the faux rocks look um, and I get that that is pretty much what you normally see in zoos. Most zoos will use the sort of poured concrete or just fiberglass fake rocks and Planet Zoo replicates those really well. Um, but the, if your zoo's got a high enough budget, then you would, or I would anyway, if I was making one, use either real rocks that have been transported or really realistic uh, rocks. So I tend to use the natural rocks more often than I use the faux rocks. Just tend to use the faux rocks if I've got a little space to fill, because you've got some really small ones there, especially the new ones they added um, in the last update. Um, they've got some really small ones and they are perfect for filling in any little gaps. This area at the back here that I've just added in is going to have three functions. Uh, well, four really. Function one is that it looks really cool, <laughs> which is really important in these uh, in these habitats. Um, function two is it's gonna have the sign for the habitat in the middle to announce it. Its third function is gonna be a shelter for the otters in the center. And then finally, the staff buildings for the zoo or some of the, the staff buildings for the zoo are going to be built into these wings at the side. So in classic modernist style, it is um, all about function as well as form. And I really like how this turned out. This is actually based on the entrance, although heavily modified, so that there's a sort of continuity from walking through the entrance and then seeing this habitat. But there's going to be a lot of changes, so they're not just both the same. I'm going to get rid of most of these barriers now or turn them into null barriers because um, the concrete walls will keep the otters in there's no need for any in-game barriers and um, while we finish that off let me know in the comments your thoughts on the new update and the new animal pack i would love to know what your favorite animals are and what your favorite new features are and what you are doing with those new features i always find you read the update notes and you see the, the features that you're excited about and you want to get in and use and then later on you always end up finding more stuff that maybe you didn't think was that interesting when you first read about it or maybe it wasn't in the initial announcement and you end up with stuff that makes a huge difference to building your zoos that you wouldn't really have thought about like some of the tiny little rocks in the Europe pack I use those all the time now and I love stuff like that and then we'll put the staff gate at the back here so that they can get into the habitat I'm just making sure everything is outside the line of the concrete so uh, I don't get any notifications about the otters escaping although thinking about it this is in sandbox so I can just turn those off anyway this is the first zoo of my own that I built in sandbox mode so I'm still getting used to uh, the advantages of doing that but I'm absolutely loving the ability to just build something um, and if I don't like it just delete it and start again without worrying about the huge amounts of my zoo's limited funds that I've just wasted doing that so that's brilliant let's get on to the planting so I created uh, a sort of area of wetland looking vegetation in the capybara walkthrough which I spent quite a lot of time on and I was really happy with so I'm going to copy and paste that into this habitat and then just keep copying and moving and modifying things um, until I'm happy with it and then put some sort of more unique foliage in at certain points to cover up areas or highlight areas that I want like this little bit of uh, moss here and just keep playing with it until everything's perfect um, and then put some logs in I always like to have a log or two lying around 
Um, you see that in real zoos because it provides enrichment for the animals and it just kind of looks interesting so we'll have one or two of those on the land and I'm going to put one into the water as well uh, put a load of bracken in and just make sure that everything looks really rich and there's no sort of areas of, of nothingness and then we will cover up the gaps between the path and the habitat with some of the faux rocks that I was talking about earlier that I like to use for this sort of thing rather than actually inside the habitat. So this makes everything look much nicer and it also keeps the guests slightly away from the glass, which you would tend to do in a real zoo. And it covers up some of the slightly janky pathing around here, um, terrain changes and paths, especially when water's involved is uh, not one of the easiest things to do in Planet Zoo. And uh, this is gonna look a whole lot nicer once I've finished putting all this stuff in. One of the things I really like about the faux rocks is that as well as choosing the color of the rock itself, there's a secondary color for shadows. And if you make that green, you get a sort of mossy effect that blends in really nicely with everything else that I'm uh, that I'm building here. And I'll put some of these much smaller rocks in as well, just for variety. I think this looks really nice when it's done the way the path sort of melds into the habitat. And when it's all finished, I really, really like this habitat. <laughs> as I record this, it is Tuesday morning on DLC release day. I am feverishly waiting for the update to be released so I can download it and add the otters into this habitat and then do any final adjustments that are necessary and get some footage of them gambling around in the habitat and swimming about. So pretty busy day today. I finished um, episode one yesterday which should have been released a couple of hours ago if you're watching this but i cannot wait to to download it along with the new update as well some amazing new features in there like the first person perspective camera you know, the new terrain tools which i think are going to come in incredibly useful if they work the way that i think they're going to from reading the description let's finish off the shelter for the otters so i'm using these tropical plant boards uh, which i really like they're one of my favorite pieces on the front here just sunk slightly into those wooden planks to get a really nice effect. Um, we'll put some signs on the front and then we'll move on to the inside of the shelter and start building up the, uh, the back wall for where the staff entrance is. So we'll keep it pretty simple in here. Some more of the dark wood uh, and then some more white concrete, of course, just to sit this staff gate in and make it all look perfect. And then inside the shelter, I'm gonna have the forget what they're called platform sleeping platforms or, or whatever I think you're supposed to use them in the water but they work just as well on land and then we'll put a sign in so we have a name obviously the otter pool and I'm gonna use these um, copper pieces to make a sort of um, art piece behind them I've got to give credit to the wonderful Ina Meinung who I built Pomoja Wildlife Park with well she built Pomoja Wildlife Park and I helped out. Um, that technique with the copper uh, hexagons is something that she came up with for Mosier Wildlife Park, um, which I really liked. We used it in the entrance there, come up with a new design using those same pieces to use here. We'll just do a bit more planting and that is the otter pool complete. So stick around for the cinematics where you can see the new short clawed otters playing around in this habitat. Um, I cannot wait to see it myself. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching as always guys. I'll be back on Saturday with episode 3 of the Wetlands and I will see you then. Bye.